Black Suburban says he doesn't deserve grace because we're a win. We're in win now mode. That's the entire the entire reason why they had to get rid of Trey. We didn't have time for grace. It's fair. I mean that that is that is fair. I guess. I guess for me, I give grace to the player. I don't give grace to the organization. Is that fair? Like the team doesn't deserve grace, but Brock also didn't ask for this. Like all Brock did was come in as the last pick in the draft in a really bad situation and play really good football. Like that's not his fault. He did what he was supposed to do. Then the team decided to just turn everything over to him. And I'm sure he was happy about that, but that's not his fault. Like, so I understand it. Like, as a fan, if you were on a Trey Lance bandwagon a bit, having people talk ish month after month can be frustrating. And it feels like you've got to now overcorrect all the things that other people said. But in the middle of this is a 23 year old player who is playing in his 13th career regular season start, that all he has done is outplayed his contract. Brock has done nothing wrong. He hasn't. Now, if you want to go with fans and you want to go with the organization, sure, do that. But Brock himself, in my opinion, deserves that grace. He does. I, I believe he deserves the grace too. That's the thing. I, I believe Brock deserves a chance to, if you're calling a guy a real deal, you've got to give these kids, and by the way, Brock, you're right. There, this is the thing. When I criticize Brock, I do it not out of spite. I same way I would criticize Traverius Ward or Brandon Ayuk For or sure. Aaron Banks yes. or any other yes. player. And it's yes. not vitriol. It's just obje objectively critiquing. Yes. And, I, and I think that I, I agree with you, Jesse. And I also think that because this team is allegedly, I mean, does this 42 to 10 at the beginning of the fourth quarter against the Dallas Cowboys seem like a decade ago now? Oh, it, it most certainly does. Yes. That, that feeling of us, we were, all of us, we were hyped, right? Like this idea that like there was a confidence in the building. And I think in this business though, there are certain things that can be a mirage and it's a 17 game season. That being said, there's ways to come back. I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't, I don't know if Brock has a game against Jacksonville like this. I, I strongly believe that Sam Darnold will be facing Tampa. Oh, yeah. If he has another one, for sure. I, I don't know that it happens for sure out of the bye, but definitely. Um, Jesus, I think I just answered your question, Jesus, or your comment. He says, I refuse to give grace to a, fa to a fan base. Okay, okay, that's fair. What you're saying there is fair. I just want to make sure that it doesn't... It's unfair to do to Brock Purdy, is what I'm saying. If Again, if you want to go with the fan base... That right. is fine. I, I understand you wanting to fight fire with fire. I, I do, Jesus. I yep. understand taking that stance. And I'm not going to begrudge you if you feel like it was over the top, because I do. I agree. I felt like it was over the top one way. Um, but I, I just, just like in that moment, you have to remember how unfair people were to Trey Lance. Remember that there is a human being, and I can tell you, now that Trey's gone, I can tell you this unequivocally. I know for a fact, this is not my opinion. Right. I'm not going to tell you how I know these things, Yep. but I know for a fact that, that Trey Lance's family was feeling the effects of 100%. all that hate that was coming Trey Lance's way. And on the other end of this is a human being. So treating Brock Purdy and going that in on Brock Purdy the way that people did Trey Lance, although it may feel good in the moment, the flip side is, is that Brock's family is on social media and they are also going to see those things and it will wear on them as well. And that being so said, we have to remember yeah, those things. And we can remember that. And it's okay to say, it doesn't mean guy, that we can't, we no, can't critique him hundred percent. Yeah. And, and that's and Jesse's not saying that's what I was trying to say is like, that's, yeah. there's a fine line between being an absolute, I won't say it, but like the idea that, yes, I also know there's certain things that we know, won't say how I know this, that I think people forget that Brock came in last year after Jimmy went down. 
Brock was not a guy that Kyle Shanahan handpicked. Brock was not a guy that Kyle Shanahan thought is the wonder kind. It was not the way the 49ers drew this up at all, at all. And so I think that does play a part here is that Kyle acquiesced. Kyle said, okay, and Kyle's going to build up confidence. But I will tell you this. You can call it quarterback polygamy or what have you. I don't even know if that's like, that's a great term. But I honestly think that Kyle is like, hey, I'm not paying this guy. What is he making? What, $750,000 or something like yeah, that? Yeah, like eight fifty dollars or something like 850. that. Yeah. This is not something where Kyle feels any pressure, I guarantee you, when the rubber hits the road. Kyle's got his extension. Yeah, they made their – Kyle and John's got their bag. What's Jake going to do? Sure. Fire him? No. Sure. So, like, I'm telling you right now, like, there's going to be some conversation. And if this is a meritocracy as much as, like, people want to think – I'm not going to be surprised at all when Sam Darnold starts getting a couple reps. I don't think it's the right call. I also think that if Trey Lance were still on this team and if they had not acquired Sam Darnold and you had two young quarterbacks and Brock had played the way he has the last three games, are you telling me that Kyle Shanahan might not have gone to Trey Lance at the end of that game? Mm -hmm. Are you telling me that that would have, that's outside the realm of the possibility I just don't buy that. And so I'm going to say it's going to be this. These next two weeks are going to be interminable. It's going to be horrible. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a lot of speculation, a lot of speculation. Uh, okay. Joey Mellon says defense can't stop the run. The pass can't get to the quarterback. Purdy is throwing picks. What the hell happened to this team after Dallas brother? If I had the answers, I would be coaching this team. Vinyl Work says, I bet the Niners behind the doors regret trading Trey Lance. I never want to hear Brock Purdy and Joe Montana in the same sentence ever again. Okay. Jason says, if the 2016 team had shown up today instead of the Bengals, Carlos Hyde gets 175 yards and two tuts. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Jonathan says, the Bengals running offense looked good against our defense. By the way, wasn't that their run offense rank in the bottom of the half of the league? It was. And I actually talked about this with coach today uh, when I was on my walk be before I think he went live. And I said, I think a lot of those numbers are going to be skewed because they are a team that uses their pass game to set up their run game. And nobody was scared of their pass game because of Joe Burrow's injury and T Higgins injury. And now that they are healthy, it would open things up for them. And it definitely has. Uh, north of no, uh, north of nowhere says the defense has been bad, but the offense went from scoring 33 points a game through week five to 17 each of the last three games. Yeah. Yes. Agree with you. Uh, Juan Torres says, will we ever invest in our old line Philly in the Hawks do who brother? That's great question. Uh, they need to, they should have been, and they haven't been. Derek says, blaming the GM and head coach for not prioritizing cornerback and linemen. Mm -hmm. Fair offensive lineman again. Joey Mellon says, defense can't tackle. That's oh. the other thing. The defense can't tackle right now, and that is not necessarily a Wilkes problem. But again, somebody will likely be scapegoated, and it might be Wilkes during the bye week. We'll see. Clone Trooper says, it's not all on Brock, but it's definitely concerning seeing these types of plays three weeks in a row for a guy that's supposed to be a franchise quarterback. I agree. It's not all on him, and it is concerning because we are still talking about a quarterback with a small sample size, and right now those three games in a row being the most recent games are starting to ring every bit as loud as those 15 or so good games that we saw. They just are at this point. And it's like, wh which one is the real Brock Purdy? You're not going to know for a while. Uh, RS says San Francisco's last interception was called back for roughing the passer. Brock Purdy fumbled on the next play. Strip sack fumbled. Damn you, Wilkes. Yeah, uh, again, we talked about that. We didn't know because we went live after the what we thought was the interception. Again, David and I both agreed that that is more alarming, that he turned it over a second straight time after getting the ball gifted back.